last lesson of our course basic storm chase targeting today or in this lesson we're going to be talking about warm fronts or as i like to call it the why you chase illinois boundary uh, anybody who's been around storm chasing a long time knows that illinois warm fronts are always something to behold so there's a hidden joke in there for sure that uh just yeah just doesn't mean that warm fronts in illinois will always produce but it is a funny joke regardless so our standard disclaimer storm chasing is dangerous and uh, you should definitely not use these guides as a replacement for official training in the sense of you probably should get something uh, from the National Weather Service as well, spotter training, etc. These are meant to supplement that kind of training and really improve upon any weak areas in it, etc. But these are not a replacement. So with that said, there's your disclaimer. So let's talk about warm fronts. Uh, we looked at this chart in the first lesson and it shows all the various surface boundaries i wanted to revisit it since we're really kind of wrapping up the surface boundaries we've talked about dry lines and the triple point we haven't really talked about cold fronts that much we'll re we'll visit them here in a little bit i'll talk a little bit more about why you might want to chase those because we don't have a lesson specifically depicted for that and also warm fronts today uh you know typically depicted by the red uh scalloped line warm moist air surging northward into cooler and drier air let's take a look at a surface chart this is the, i want to take a look at actual surface data because this is usually one of the more confusing uh phenomena to look for you know a warm front you can kind of when you have isobars and stuff you can kind of follow it along with isobars but also you can kind of follow it along surface charts it's not always cut and dry in that sense because of the simple fact of you can sometimes get you know 54 over 53 you know 38 over 38 that's obviously north of it 54 over 53 that's obviously just north of it 69 over 63 but you'd probably in here somewhere you would have a like 64 over 63 or something is that north of it is that on it on a satellite image this would obviously most likely you would have thick stratus just north of this and obviously some rain and stuff happening north of it with the upper level storm system south of it you know it's probably you're probably getting some broken clouds that sort of thing especially with temperatures pushing 69 70 degrees down here in the warm sector so just just keep in mind that you know usually along a warm front you're going to see temperatures are a lot warmer south of it uh, and you'll definitely see ins or not instability but dew points which are higher south of it and uh, this is a pretty dramatic example from April 9th this year which obviously produced a really large and violent tornado in Illinois so again the Illinois warm front uh, we laugh about it but there it is so let's talk about some things to look for when it comes to warm fronts uh, you know we got to ask ourselves a few questions is there enough lift how much of a cap is there uh, so you can oftentimes, I've been burnt by warm fronts on more than one occasion, setting along it, thinking there would be storms fire, and there's just too much of a cap, not enough lift. This happens, you know, you'll get more, this will happen more, this kind of a scenario on along a warm front than even the dry line. You have to really be careful about that. Uh, a lot of times, if you do, it can get storms, it's, you know, it's a very good thing. But anyways... Is storm motion going to work with the orientation of the front? That's another question you got to look for. For instance, if you have a uh, warm front arcing southeast and storm motions are going to be northeast, they're not going to be moving along the front. They're going to be crossing over. And you can get tornadoes that way, but typically that's not a favorable warm front scenario. You're not going to be targeting the warm front in that case. Uh, just as one example, you definitely wouldn't. Now, if you you got to ask yourself this are storm motions going to be roughly along the orientation of the front for maximum effectiveness i'll put that in quotes because that's the best way to put it i guess from a chase standpoint you want to you know you want a warm front arcing east with storm motions roughly east moving along the front riding the boundary the storms tend to do that and as they do they will take advantage of the uh you know better low level environment along that warm front and good things will happen if you're a storm chaser so you got to ask yourself that 
And then finally, you know, storms crossing warm fronts, they'll pose a brief but usually singular tornado risk. And what I mean by that, if you have a southeast oriented front, a storm moving toward it, as it interacts with the front, it'll probably ramp up and possibly produce a tornado. But once it crosses over, it's done. It's a singular event. It's over. Now, storm chasing wise, there are a lot of uh, marginal days that this kind of a scenario, you know, that would be a big kind of get if you do that. So it's important. So anyways, let's let's talk one let's go back to the warm front slide. I did promise to talk about cold fronts, so let's spend just a brief second talking about them. When would you ever chase a cold front? In a case like this, we talked about this on the first lesson and I'm going to repeat it. If you ever see a strong push of winds behind a cold front, we're talking 20, 30 miles per hour out of the north, that front's probably hauling, it's probably moving south quickly. You're not going to be able to chase that for you know the supercells tornadoes it's just not going to be what you want that cold front you're either going to have a squall line along it because the forcing is going to be so great or the cold front's going to be undercutting storms because it's going to be moving so fast it's actually just going to be cutting through storms so and those storms instead of being surface-based supercells will be elevated supercells behind the cold front so if you want to chase a cold front the simple advice is it needs to be moving extremely slow there have been i have had some really good chases like that with a very it's a cold front because it's moving south but it's moving very slow uh but you can i mean I, i'm still not a big fan of cold fronts it's usually a last resort but if there's a cold front moving in it's moving slowly and there's good instability along it and it's oriented in such a way with storm motions in such a way that they would not be undercut it would be worth a shot for sure so anyways let's go back to warm fronts when should you chase a warm front well, first option is when it's the only target, and that's a duh. You know, if you if you go back to this surface chart and you happen to be living in northern Illinois and, and you know, you got this problem, you got a cold front here, you're not chasing that, and the warm front out here, you know, it's so far away. Well, at that point, you might just chase the warm warm front. It's your only option. So, I mean, you're, you're just chasing it by default. Uh, when storm motions and modes will be favorable for more discrete storms riding the front. I mean, if you have... The, if you're going to have boom, 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 three storms, they're going to kind of gradually lift with this front. I mean, if that's what it looks likely, yeah, you're going to chase that for sure. When low levels near the front are much more impressive than the ambient environment south of the dry line, south of the front, south of off the dry line in the warm sector. So, for instance, if you have east southeast winds along this warm front, which does look to be the case, and you got like, say, south southwest winds or southwest winds, as it's the case here in Kansas City. Yeah, though th this environment's not the greatest for tornadoes. This environment is. It's got, it's very moist. It's got good east southeast winds. There's no reason why you shouldn't chase that. So yeah, a good again, and of course, the golden rule: when a warm front is set up across Illinois, you definitely want to chase that one. So, the, the warm fronts. To sum it up, the best way to put it is they're fickle, but if you can get storms that are somewhat discreet that are going to be riding it especially for a more sustained period of time, you're probably going to thank yourself. You can get some big tornadoes, you know, some really good storm chases out of those kind of forecasts. So just just beware. There are some big caveats. We've talked about some of them, HP storm modes, messy, all that. But the big thing is, is that when things have like this are setting up, it's time. So Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to be talking about targeting. We're going to pull all this together, talk about storm motion and how to target. That's coming up in the next lesson.